Hi everyone and welcome again to Creative Cakes by Sharon. Since the release of the movie Maleficent, I've had quite a few requests to create an Angelina Jolie Maleficent cake, so I hope you're going to enjoy this. If you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can see all my Creative Cake tutorials as I release them. Now today I've teamed up with my friend Andrea from Pink Cake Princess and she's created a wonderful tutorial on how to create a Maleficent figurine. So be sure to check it out, the link will be at the end of my video. So today I have quite a few things here and to start with I've got my template of Maleficent as well as a couple of other pictures of her so I can use them as guides. I've got my 10 inch round cake, I've also got my fondant roller, I've got a pair of scissors, my offset spatula, a sharp knife, a palette knife, I've got my X-Acto blade and I've got a few brushes. I've got some fluffy brushes as well as some fine pointed brushes. I've got a couple of lollipop sticks here. I've got two which I'm definitely going to use in a couple of spare. I've got some black fondant, some white fondant, a little bit of red and a tiny bit of green. I've got four different colour petal dust here. I've got some brown, cream, some black and purple. I've also got some gel colouring in green and black as well as some red to brighten up Maleficent's lips. I've got some melted white chocolate, a little bit of water, I've got some dark chocolate ganache, some purple buttercream frosting, I've got a pair of disposable gloves as well as a batch of Rice Krispie treats which I've made up and a board which I've covered in purple fondant. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is fill the centre of my cake with my purple buttercream frosting and then pop the top of the cake back on. Now here I've got my template of Maleficent and I've placed her at the very top of my round cake so that I can cut out a neck for her. Once I've cut out her neck I'm going to hold my knife vertically and cut around the edge of the template and remove the excess cake. I'm also going to cut along the bottom of Maleficent's chin to remove the next section. It's a lot easier to decorate once it's separated and attach it at the end. Now I'm going to start working on Maleficent's horns with my Rice Krispies, but first I need to form the shape with my lollipop sticks. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure against my template and bend the lollipop sticks until they just snap. I don't want to bend them too much so that it breaks off totally. So I'm going to bend them in one direction first and then backwards in the other direction until I've got the correct shape of her horns. This is where your spare lollipop sticks might come in handy. If you're not happy with the shape the first time you can try it again on your spare lollipop sticks or in case you break them you know you've got those extra spare. So once I've got the correct shape I'm going to start forming them with the Rice Krispies and to mould with Rice Krispies it's a lot easier if you're wearing a pair of disposable gloves. So I'm going to start forming the Rice Krispies starting from the bottom of her horns up and it's easiest to make a sort of a cone shape. Once I've got a little bit of a cone happening I'm going to poke the lollipop stick into the Rice Krispies and then to create the top it's easiest to place some in my hand and wrap them around the top of the lollipop stick. It's a good idea to use a lot of pressure here and push the Rice Krispies as hard as you can into the shape that you're after. Just check up against the template until you get a shape that you're happy with. And then of course I need to make sure it's going to be supported by my cake. So I'm going to add a little bit to either side of the horn so that it can sit up against the cake nicely without falling off. So I'm just going to work towards creating two supports on the edges. And then I'm also going to add some more Rice Krispies to lengthen it so that it can actually stand up against the back of the cake as well as on my board. A good way to mould the horn to the cake is to use firm pressure and press the Rice Krispie up against the cake so that it creates a perfect indentation in the Rice Krispie and moulds perfectly around the head. If you need to at this point, if you're finding a few little cracks in your Rice Krispie, you can just dab on a little bit of your white melted chocolate just to solidify those sections. By the time you finish the first horn, you'll be an expert, so go ahead and create the second horn. Now I'm going to create two long pieces to go on the sides of Maleficent's face. While you're working with the Rice Krispies they are going to harden and stiffen up and I found that popping them in the microwave for about 20 seconds softens them just enough so that they're pliable to use again. 
Now just to make extra sure that my horns hold their shape and they don't fall apart, I'm going to use some of the white melted chocolate and rub a thin coating all along the horns. I also have to make Maleficent's collar and I'm going to do this by moulding the Rice Krispies into a triangle shape and just giving it a bit of a wave, just like the picture in the template. I'm going to try and make the bottom edge as flat as possible so it sits neatly on the cake board. So once I've finished with the Rice Krispies, I'm going to put all the moulded pieces aside to dry. Now there's just a little bit of carving required for Maleficent and I've cut along these two black sides and I'm going to fold them up and then carve a little section out of the cake. So I'm just going to run my knife along the edge of the template and then cut in from the side to remove about an inch deep worth of cake because this is where the Rice Krispies are going to sit. And to create the definition of her cheekbone, I'm just going to cut out this little section of the template and carve out a little bit of the cake. Now I want Maleficent's eyes to be set back into the cake a little bit rather than appear as if they're popping out of the cake. So I've just cut the eyes out of the template and I'm just going to carve in and hollow out a section for the eyes. Finally, I just need to cut along the top of the neck to make it a little bit shorter. Now I'm going to cover the cake in the dark chocolate ganache. So I'm just going to make sure I get a nice smooth covering all along the top of the cake, including the sides and getting into all the little edges and not forgetting the neck piece as well. Then pop it in the fridge for about 15 minutes. To create Maleficent's lips, I'm just going to roll a little bit of a sausage for her bottom lip and taking two round balls and tapering them on the edges for the top lip. And using the template as a guide, cut out her lips from this red fondant and carefully placing the lips on top of the rolled pieces of fondant, then moulding it into the correct shape. Using my palette knife, I'm just going to score a very light line in between her top and bottom lip. And now using my black petal dust, I'm just going to lightly brush the edges of her lips as well as the centre. And then because the red fondant is going to dry and become a bit dull, I'm going to paint over her lips with my red gel colouring. Now I've rolled out my green fondant and I'm going to use my small round cutter to cut out two circles for her eyes. Then using my fine paintbrush and my green gel paste, I'm going to create a series of fine brush strokes right around the edge of the fondant. This is going to give a more lifelike appearance to her eyes and on the very edge I'm going to add a thin line right around the eye. And now using the black food colouring I'm just going to carefully add the pupils to each eye. Using some boiling water, my offset spatula and a paper towel, I'm going to smooth the top surface of my ganache. So dipping the spatula into the water heats it up then wiping off any excess water. As I glide the spatula over the cake, the heat gently melts the ganache enough to get a smooth surface. Now before I cover Maleficent's face with the fondant, I'm going to add a few raised features. So using a little bit of white fondant, I'm going to create her nose and I'm just going to mould it and shape it using my template as a guide. So it's a little bit of a squarish nose and a nice sharp point at the end. And I'm also going to add two raised parts above the eyes so the eyebrows sit nice and high. Then I'm going to roll out my fondant large enough so that the template sits nicely in the middle and I've got a nice border around the side so that the fondant covers the front and sides of the cake. And then I'm going to carefully roll my fondant onto my roller and gently drape it over the cake. Then I'm going to work to smoothening out the surface of the cake and carefully opening up the fondant around the edges and smoothening down the sides. I'm going to make sure that I smooth into all of the features that I've carved out of the cake before trimming off the excess at the bottom of the cake. To raise the eyes a little bit, I'm forming two little oval shapes of fondant and inserting them into the center of each eye. Now I need to start working on Maleficent's headpiece. So I'm going to cut out her headpiece from the template and cut it out of my black fondant. Now I've got my template on the cake to make a mark in exactly the center point of where the headpiece is going to go. Once I've carefully transferred the fondant onto the cake, I'm going to smooth it out and trim off the excess. Now I can transfer the entire cake onto my cake board. Here I'm covering my Rice Krispies with some black fondant and then attaching them to the side of her head with a little bit of melted white chocolate. 
I'm going to cover both of Maleficent's horns in black fondant now and you can see here that they look as if they're almost wrapped like bandages. So I'm going to cut out a series of strips in my black fondant and carefully wrap them around the horns overlapping each layer. I don't need to cover the inside of the horn that's resting up against the cake so I'll leave that uncovered. Lastly, I need to make sure I've covered both of my collar pieces in some black fondant as well. It's now time to adhere the collar and the horns to the cake. So using the melted chocolate, I'm going to apply a little bit and then hold it in position until the chocolate has set. And of course, doing the same thing for her horns. I need to add a bit more taping to Maleficent's headpiece and I also want to carve in some of the stitching that she has. So using the back of my knife I'm just going to cut in a little V shape just like on the template. And then using some long strips of black fondant I'm going to start draping them from the side of her head up over and across the top of her headpiece. Making sure each layer crisscrosses over the previous layer. The eyes are made in a series of layers, starting with the whites of the eyes. And once I've cut these out and stuck them onto the cake, I can then add the green parts of the eye, which are now dried. So the final pieces I need to cut out from my template are the eyelashes and the eyebrows, and then carefully cutting into the fondant so that I can create each individual eyelash. Once my eyelashes are ready to go, I'm just going to wet the edges of her eyes and then carefully stand the eyelashes right at the very edges of her eyes. I'm going to use my palette knife and my paintbrush to lift up the eyelashes and curl them nicely, followed by the eyebrows and the bottom lashes. I also made two little indentations for her nostrils using the back of my paintbrush. The very last feature I have to stick on is of course Maleficent's lips and I'm just going to position them using my template as a guide and adhere it with a little bit of water. Lastly it's time for the fun part and that's to fill in Maleficent's eyeshadow and the shading on her face. So I'm going to start with my purple petal dust and create a nice deep purple eyeshadow for her. At the top of this I'm going to fill in that section right up to her brow with my cream petal dust. Villains generally have very deep shades of eyeshadow so feel free to add as much colour as you like. And finally, using my brown and black petal dust, I'm going to start shading in all of the rigid areas on Maleficent's face, especially focusing on her high cheekbones and gradually building up the shading until I'm happy with it. And here she is, the one who was known for being good and for being a villain, Maleficent. So guys, if you enjoyed my tutorial, don't forget to give it a like and share it with your friends. I love to get your feedback and suggestions about what you'd like to see me create, so leave me a comment in the section below. If you haven't already done so, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get all my Creative Cake tutorials as I release them. Don't forget to also check out Andrea's Maleficent Cake Topper. The link is on the screen now. And as always guys, thanks for watching.